Hello, competitive Pokemon trainers. You guys really serious about entering a tournament? Well, time to show you how you can prepare yourself. Welcome to the Battle Tower. Please register with me to enter a battle room. Nick, make a battle room challenge? Let's do it. I already asked about it before, so let's go in. There are two battle rooms, level 50 and level 100. Which would you like to challenge? Let's do level 50. Excuse me, you don't have to be eligible Pokemon. What? You must have three different Pokemon level 50 or less to enter. You must also be holding different kinds of items. Eggs, Kyogre, and Rayquaza are ineligible, as well as other super legendaries such as Mewtwo, Mew, Celebi, um, Groudon. Yeah, yeah, I get it. No super powerful Pokemon and no loud carrying eggs. This is when you're ready. This bitch. This bitch. Fine. Pull me in a level 100 battle room, please. Is that Pokemon you wish to enter? I will take Mudkip, Gardevoir, and Cacturn, please. Those are the three I want. Running battle room, are your progress is Is that okay? I mean, sure, totally for this, why not? Let's go for it. And anyway, welcome back, everybody, to more Let's Play Pokemon Sapphire version. This is your host, DMJ406. I'll direct you to your battle room now. It's time to show you how the battle tower works. And, well, it's honestly kind of annoying. But, well, it's here to prove yourself if you really want to, so. Well, here we go, random battles, it's two. Go my Pokemon fight the battle! Go my Pokemon fight the battle. Oh, the sayings of the battle tower, right, of people who emerge, yep. So yeah! This battle tower is very poorly implemented in this game, but basically, yep, your Pokemon are allowed to be up to level 50 for the level 50 room, otherwise, they have to be up to level 100. They could be anywhere for level 100, but your battle Pokemon are level 100, so chances are, you're gonna be messed up pretty good if you're not at level 100, or stopped at level 50. So yeah, this is totally fair. But basically, you basically battle a whole bunch of trainers in a row. I mean, you heal in between every fight, but well. There's a level gap for me now because, well. Yeah, I decided not to level up all the way because why would I waste my time doing that, right? Every Pokemon needs to have, can't have, uh, you know, you only have unique hold items. Nobody's allowed to have the same hold items as another Pokemon on the team, so. Oh no, that's starting to do work. Oh man, bug types. I didn't realize that you're actually good against two of them with your bug types. This is a great place to go, if you will. Oh yeah, you can't swip, which switch out in between. Just a heads up there. Oh shit, I got nothing to deal with you except Ice Beam. Really? Dragon Rage to do 40 damage? That's a move you have for this? Basically, this is what I like to call the uh, competitive Pokemon scene training. Basically, oh no. This is a good place to go to see how competitive your Pokemon are. All the AVs you train them, their natures, their moves, all that. All the IVs. Everything you worked on your Pokemon will come into play once you come here. So, yeah. This place is, uh, fun, I guess? It's like I said, this is a place where only the most truly competitive of Pokemon players get the most out of. Wow, I even paralyzed you, nice. It goes to well test your strategies and how well you've prepared your Pokemon. Well, in fact, I might actually be able to beat this level 100 Pokemon team with Pokemon in the 50s. I mean, they make some of these really easy. It's a very randomized set. I think the way it is, you can basically run into any combination of trainers that have, you know, any combination of Pokemon with moves that are reasonable. It's, a uh... Ooh, sweet. Uh-oh, I better win then. Ow! Fake out, you dick! And that killed her. Wow, that killed her. Well, you're screwed. I guess, uh, I guess my raid's done. <laughs> Oh, dead. But yeah, the Battle Tower is, uh, interesting. Yeah, okay, I can't do it, because I don't have Pokemon that are around level 50 anymore. Damn it. Thank you for playing, your record will be saved. Please wait. Wow, this is your next challenge. Your record was amazing. Zero win streak. Wow, that was actually really uneventful. I'm sorry about that. What are you here for? Hello, you're the trainer who just had a battle, right? I'm gathering interviews and trainers all over the place. May I get a few words from you about your impressions on battling? Sure. Really? Thank you. 
then, um, how did things turn out on the battle tower today? Were you satisfied with the battle, or are you unhappy? Dissatisfied. Oh, I see. Well, it's certainly difficult to make a battle turn out exactly as planned. Oh, oh, may I ask one more question? You would describe your presence on the battle with one saying. What would it be? I do have a word for you, and you won't let me say it. Knockout! Not the move I wanted. Aurora Beam! Aerial Ace! Baton Pass! Now it's your turn! You're next! You're gonna die! Ooh. How about... Finish! I'm done! I'm done with this thing! Oh, that is stunningly cool! That's a great line! I hope you look great next time, too! I hope to see you again soon! Cool. So, yeah! Let me just go see if I can battle Wally right now, anyway. Oh, wait. I'm not... This isn't the Elite Four building, you idiot! What are you doing? You want to battle him? You gotta go to the Elite Four building! Moron. Well, whatever. Uh, well, that was fun showing. I didn't progress anywhere because I forgot how awful the battle tower is for me. What do you have? It's for competitive Pokemon trainers to really test how good they are. I think they fix it in later generations where if your Pokemon are not at the level specified, like 50 or 100, they quote unquote normalize them. They basically pseudo level your Pokemon up or down to those levels respectively, giving them stat boosts and the like to make them equivalent, to put you on even ground with everybody. And well, that could be. Well, that's where it gets really competitive. Unfortunately, this game didn't think about that. So it's really rough to do. Okay, it's not the next day yet. Oh, wait. It'll be the next day soon. I guess I'll go rematch all the trainers while I'm out there. Mudkip, let's just go trounce people. I just realized I didn't use any of my rare candies except for the one on my low tick. But you know what? That's okay. I'm not trying to evolve everybody. So what should I do? Oh, I know. Well, I already said. Let's go rematch some trainers. So remember the uh, Pokenav. I'll just do this before I, uh, we got all these trainers to, uh, refight. Unfortunately, since it's not Emerald version, I can't rematch all the, uh, gym leaders. Even though I can reach out as the Elite Four and the Champion, doesn't really matter there. Well, at least I can go have fun with other trainers out in the wild. We gotta talk to people, see if they want to rematch you. Well, they say something generic, they don't want to refight you. And some will say they're gonna get stronger, they won't be. Come on, battle with me! There we go, rematch! Send us to retalk to trainers along rounds, you may find that someone will rebattle you. You can try and remember their exact names, otherwise, I just don't care. The more you reach back to them, the stronger they get. Although, in all honesty, ow! They're not really considered worth training against, unless you aren't able to battle the uh, interviewers repeatedly or strong enough for the Elite Four. So yeah. So we're just gonna rematch for a while. In the meantime, let me tell you how the let me tell you how the um, battle tower works in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. It's actually rather simple. You just go through those battle towers of the battles. The battles of the battle tower, sorry, you mixed up my phrasing. And you just battle as much as you can. If you can get win streaks, you get extra items. Oh, I thought I could win. And well. They're based on win streaks of seven. Oh, I mean again, may I ask you for a battle? Sure, why not? For every streak of seven and beyond that you get, of a multiple of seven, you get more items. For the original streaks, for seven wins, 24, I mean, for seven wins, 14, 21, 28, 35, you know. You'll get items at random, including protein, iron, carbon, zinc, and HP up. You get one of those five items at random for getting your winning streak to go high. Oh my, I did the best I could. If your winning streak's over, they all reset and you can get all the items all over again. How was the beginning of goodbye? I hope I meet again. I don't. How about you? You like filling out with seeds. Oh my god, you gave me bullet seed! Did I never talk to you? Cool, weird advice. A TM Tango machine is Good for time, good for only for one-time use. But you just gotta take twice before using it. Huh, what do you know? 
Apparently, I never talked to him. Either that or he just showed up now. Well. Interesting way to meet up with people, huh? And let's see what other trailers we can rematch. I'm not gonna go over all the trailers we rema rematch. I'm more just wasting time while I talk about things. But yeah. So those are the initial streaks you can get. Oh yeah, there is breeding. If only I had a ditto. Then I'd actually be willing to do that. Now, well. Nikki Blues in front of my junior partner, right? You can also battle duos! So yay, I can actually battle um, duos of teams as well. So double battles can be repeated as well. Not that you're strong at all, but hey, keep trying, I guess. Yes, you got pickup! Hope you get an item! Please get an item, please get an item, please get an item. But yeah, you have those for streaks of 7 to 35, those stat increasing items. For, well, balancing out EV is the way you want. EVs and IVs are very important once you get into a place like the Battle Tower, so hopefully you balance them the right way for your team's sake. I'm gonna get into the groove! But well, now we have streaks of 35 or more. I have value if you've raised your Pokemon properly. God damn, you're the one who has six Pokemon, right? This is gonna be rough. But yep. Once you get to 35 and beyond, more random prizes start to appear. So you can start having a lot more. Those include items such as usually a lot of hold items you can get for if you get a win streak of 35 or higher for every multiple of seven. Which, uh, yeah. It's annoying to get some streaks of seven, but that's the way it is. If you want to get good, you want to get some extra items, make your team even better. Some of the hold items you can get for a streak of 35 or higher, 42, 49, 56, what have you. You get items such as leftovers, a hold item that heals you a bit every turn. White herb. I forget what that does. Let me look that up while I'm thinking about it. Just, just keep killing everyone, Mudkip. I'm looking this up, all right? All right, white herb negates negative stat changes. It's a hold down that negates negative stat changes. That's what it does. Okay. Right, I forgot how that worked. Quick claw can sometimes allow you to get the first strike, even when you're um slower than your opponent. Mental herb, a hold item that gets rid of infatuation if used. In case you get infatuated. Good to know about in case you know. You hate infatuation, people use the track. Bright powder! Ah, bright powder. I keep forgetting about that move. That hold item. It reduces accuracy of moves targeting the holder by 10%. So you hit somebody with bright powder, your accuracy will go down. Good old bright powder. I was introduced in Gen 2. But there was something else in Gen 2. I kind of forget, but you know what? Don't worry about it. Okay, other rewards, we have Choice Band. I know what the Choice Band does. If you use one move, you can only use one move on your Pokemon, the first move you use in a battle. However, the strength of that move will be increased throughout the entirety of the battle. So, you know, if you have one move on a Pokemon you really like, Choice Band's a good one to go with. If you have a truly surefire move you think will kill almost any Pokemon, there you go. They're growing admirably. I mean, that's very unrealistic, but hey, it's a way to go. You like outrage or something. But there you go. It exists. Stop eating the air, you psychopath! Are you keeping up with your training? I sure am. Let me show you the evidence. God damn it. You also have King's Rock! A good item to actually evolve Pokemon as well. But also holding the item can make the opponent flinch sometimes when you attack. So yep, yeah, you gotta enjoy that uh King's Rock as well. Focus Band! Is that the one I think it is? Yeah, focus band! Okay, yeah. Focus band! Basically, there's a 12% chance it'll activate that if you get hit by a move, that'll make you faint. I need to get more practice in it, I guess. It'll make you not faint. So yeah, focus band is a move that can keep you alive. And well, that's useful. It's only 12% chance. And it could also be good for confusion now. The Pokemon I've been raised just like before, ready to take you down. I didn't read you had to say, I don't care. Yeah, Focus Band's a, de is a decent item. There's a better version of that item introduced in Gen 4, which is 100% activated, but it's a one-use item. Still 
cold item that can keep you from dying if you want to use it. There you go. Not bad. And the last item is a scope lens, which I believe all that does is increase your critical hit rate. At least I'm pretty sure that's what that does. Yep. Raise the critical hit rate. So yeah, scope lens can increase your chance of critical hits. Makes it easier to, you know, do some extra damage you feel you may need. Not a bad way to go. And that's all the items you can get. There's also some special objects you get from, uh, you get some special prizes that are held, I guess, as ribbons or something you can look at if you get far enough. For having 50 consecutive wins overall, you get a silver shield. For 100 consecutive wins, you get a gold shield. God, those are like a pain in the ass to get. And all Pokemon that competed in in the, uh, well, win streaks, and you've got, you've got a winning ribbon, for every Pokemon in your uh, competing party for the win streaks, you got to 56 straight wins, a little 50. For level 100 of getting 56 straight wins, each Pokemon gets the victory ribbon for the extra ribbons. Oh crap, I just realized, I need to show the master and hyper rank ribbons for uh, Swallow. I guess I'll do that in a bit. But yep, that is all the Bound Tower is for. Freaking Pride, that is it. That is it. Goddamn waste of time, if you ask me. However, well, in Pokemon Emerald, the Pokemon, the Battle Tower, along with the rest of the uh, so-called Battle Frontier, is a beast in Pokemon Emerald. Which, oh boy. You know how to raise it properly. You might have daycare skills. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that worked out. Oh, grow good. You should enter the big contest. All right, there we go. Let me just show off Swallow before I continue. But anyway, Pokemon Emerald has what they call the Battle Frontier, which, uh, oh boy. The Battle Frontier is a different beast all on its own. Oh wait, I forgot, I don't even need to take him out. I can look out of the Pokenab, what am I doing? So Swallow here, here are his other ribbons. You got the Cool Contest, Hyper Rank winner, and the Cool Contest, Master Rank winner. Make the ribbons flashier, have more of them with every win. Plain ribbons, fancy ribbons, more ribbons, more fancy ribbons. Well, that's nice. Congratulations, you won a Master Rank contest. You want a freaking cookie? Well, too bad, you're not getting one. I don't like you, Swallow, so you're not getting one. Oh, yeah, by the way. Oh, wait, I do have my mock bike back. I thought I still had my acro bike, but I guess I didn't get that because I found where Feebass was. Never mind. <laughs> I thought I had uh, an acrobike on me to go explore Route 119. Hmm. I mean, I guess I'm just gonna go around rebounding trainers for now. I don't got anything else to really go over in the game. Other oh, Mirage Island? Which, if I can't get that, then, well, tough luck. Because Mirage Island comes up very randomly. Let me talk about that next episode. Which, by the way, the next episode of the series will be the finale. Because, well,. I'm gonna hope that I can get the uh, Morales Island to come up. If not, too bad. I'll just go over it instead. Come on, there's gotta be somebody else to battle here. God damn it. I was hoping. Alright, well, anyway, yeah. The Battle Tower still exists in Pokemon Emerald. However, it has an open level battle mode instead of level 100 battle mode. Which I think means a uh, blend to the level you're on. I think. Or either that or they do force you to level 50. I don't, I don't remember how it works, but... Either way, the Battle Tower is improved in Emerald, and well... There's more to it. Because we're training here earlier, game to the next level. Stay trained with us! No way. Well, yeah, the Battle Tower... You basically... It's a little different. You have to get the 35 wins in order to have a battle for the ability symbol, as it's called, for that. We have to battle the head of the battle tower named Annabelle. If you beat them, you get a symbol, basically your badge. There's a silver and gold for every battle facility of the Battle Frontier, all seven of them. 
And each different one of the battle facilities has different gimmicks. I'm not gonna go over them all, just know there are seven different ones in total. If you can get the gold symbol on all of them, then I guess you can prove you're one of the ultimate Pokemon trainers. That you train your team to the ultimate heights, and that you are truly one of the best. But yep, Animals is basically the simplest. Battle Tower, if you know how it works in this game, you basically gotta keep going till you get 35 for silver, 70 for gold. And well, her teams are kind of ridiculous. Her silver symbol team has a freaking Entei, and her freaking gold symbol team has a Reiku and a Latios. Like, what the hell? Ooh, you're decent. Like, what the hell, woman? That's right, well, you should aim for the Pokemon League. I'm already the champion, you asshole. Don't tell I should aim for something I'm already the best at. So how about we don't go over that? Oh, thanks for the berry! I didn't have any raspberries. Oh my god, my berries stopped being planted. That sucks. The red Poke blocks, thank you. You may both inspire a weaker debate all moves you teach them. What kind of moves do your Pokemon know? Don't pin me against a tree while you say that. But yeah, basically you go through all the battle facilities of differing rules and structures. They basically are all a series of rooms you gotta basically go through over and over and over and over and over again if you want to be able to earn your key. Basically, it's a grindy method of increasing gameplay length. I'm personally not a fan of it. Like I said, only the truly competitive and dedicated to Pokemon fans would be a big fan of the Battle Tower and its Battle Frontier cousins. Is it a good challenge? Yes, absolutely. And it tests the absolute skills that your Pokemon team may have. Do I think it's worth it? No. Is it a little overdrawn out? Yes. Can it be fun? Well, like I said, it's something for only the absolutely, truly competitive and dedicated of Pokemon players. You taught them the good moves. So, you know, if you, want to bow, if you want to train yourself for doing, like, actual Pokemon tournaments, the Battle Frontier is a good way to actually train up, you know? So, you know, you could do that if you really want to, but, well, if you already have the, uh, if you beat the Elite Four and all that, and you caught Rayquaza, I consider that a strong enough achievement. You don't need to worry about going after the, uh, Battle Frontier. But hey, extra challenges are a good thing. It's a bullcrap way to extend the amount of gameplay you get out of it and encourage replay value, but hey, if you want to keep playing the game for a very long time, it's a way to go. And I won't argue with that. I just say it's not for me. Oh man, I keep forgetting about these ashes too. I already explained the items you get from these. So, yeah, I don't really care about the uh, ashy stuff. Nobody in here wanting a rematch, by the way? But yeah, if you're really curious about the rest of the battle brought here, you can look it up yourself. Because for me, I don't care for it. Oh no, my repel. But I'm at least gonna let you know that it exists. And, uh, yeah. Hey, I don't want to go over there. I think I surfed over there already, right? Yeah, I did. It's all over secret bases anyway. Is anybody here that wants to battle me? Or are you guys just gonna be, uh, doing this? At least I'm getting more berries, I suppose. I could have battled Wally again, but eh. No, I wanted to battle the twins if they could rebattle me. I want to battle at least one more trainer before I end this off. I said traitor, not Pokemon! Damn it! But yeah, if you want to truly dedicate yourself to becoming the ultimate Pokemon trainer with the Battle Frontier stuff, knock yourself out. As for me, I think I'm fine achieving what I did. So, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing else left to do in the game. Other than really explore some extra battles for rematches you get for trainers. I completely forgot you could actually do this in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. You going to keep water handy for campfires? No, I haven't! Please teach me, sir! Drown me! <laughs> Please drown me in your flames. Oh god, don't burn me to death. What? Well, I've said my piece. I'm not a big fan of the Battle Tower. And unfortunately, it shows up in every single Pokemon game. Because like I said, it's Game Freak's cheap implementation of basically increasing replay value of the game and give you post-game. 
You want to make your team better? This is the best way to do it. Test your skills against these guys and just try to get a win streak and see how well you actually develop your team. That's really it. It's good for the competitive scene, but for casual Pokemon players, you really won't get a lot out of it. And that's really all I need to say about it. Oh, who's now going to flare up, I guess? So yeah, bragging rights is basically all the Battle Tower. And the Battle Frontiers, a bigger extension of that, because that's, well, a larger variety of challenges. So at least it gives you something more. But not much more. It just gives you more. And that's really it. You know what, then we're gonna fly back to Pokemon Center and end this episode. I don't need you! I can't trade anyway! If only I had a Blossom, I could evolve that to at least show off a trade. But you know what? I don't care for it. Alright then. Well, let me just check one more thing. Before I end this episode. Let me just go over the Mirage Island stuff real quick. I've already mentioned it a bit. But I'll go over it in full. Basically, every single day, a number from 1 to 65,536, or whatever it was, is generated. If the last two bite values of that number match the personality value of any of your Pokemon, Mirage Island will appear. So you may want to trade and have a lot of different people's Pokemon on your party if you want Mirage Island to show up more frequently. Some people have said, having Great Quiza and the Reggies on your team, We'll make it summarize Island will actually appear. I will disprove that just to, you know, get rid of those early game fact guides. You know, lies! Lies and deceit! I don't need my party Pokemon for anything else anyway. I really don't care for them. And just for extra good measure, I'll throw Kyogre to the party as well. Just because I can. Keep Voltari on the party, please. And throw my shiny Reggie Rock, please. My pride and joy that I want everybody to see. I'm just gonna battle everybody and brag out of the shiny Reggie Rock. Everybody won't even know it's shiny. They'll just think it's a standard Reggie Rock because that's what they were, you know. They've never seen this thing before. They can't verify that it's a shiny. Only I can do that. You know what? It's good enough for me. But yeah. Just to prove to you... Oh, wait, I didn't put Rayquaza in my party. It does no fly, so I guess I don't need Altaria in my party. <laughs> I'll just walk around with all these legendaries and my starter. <laughs> Seems a little excessive. Eh, screw it. Why not? But, yeah. I basically said everything I wanted to say. Oh, yeah, on Mirage Island, yeah. A random number is generated based on the Pokemon's personalities in your party. Not the owners, sorry. I got that a little mixed up. The personalities. Having all the legendaries won't make it appear. But, I mean, if you want to go around with a bunch of legendaries, be my guest. So every day you gotta check with them, if it shows up, good for you! You found an island that has a bunch of grass that summons why nots from level 5 to level 50. Not only that, you also have, uh... What's the other thing you have? Oh, yeah. From level 5 to level 50 for why nots, and you can get a lychee berry, the rarest berry that can give you a gold pokey block, which I guess has great feel and can probably enhance all your stats. So, you know, gold pokey block out of a berry from that island is pretty worthwhile. But that's all you get from Mirage Island there. That is it. And, well, that's just about everything. I've gone over anything I could in this game up to this point. And, well, next episode's really just gonna be a throwaway. So, come back next time, everybody, for the finale of Let's Play Pokemon Sapphire. I got nothing else to show off, though. Hmm, actually, I think there's something interesting I can do. Let's try an actual one of the Battle Tower, I just realized. I have, oh, I have four Pokemon on my team that aren't at level 50 now, so I can use them. Ha! Huh. All right, we'll retry the Battle Tower one more time. See if I can go for a legitimate run. If not, then we're just gonna say screw it. Next episode will be the finale anyway. But hey, at least I have something to do instead of just going around rematching a bunch of trainers, right? But yeah, come back next time for the finale. I'll give my final thoughts of this game as a whole, and we'll go through the Battle Tower level 50 version just to see if it's anything different. It's not really. I've already explained it, but you know, 
I want to at least try to have something to challenge myself with and see how good my Reggies really are. Are their bodies truly Reggie? Or are they all fakes and imitators? <laughs>